let's start by doing an introduction to Microsoft practice assessments. First of all, practice assessments or tests are an amazing way to review all the content you learned throughout the certification path, all while getting ready for your certification exam. Something that is really cool is that Microsoft offers free practice assessments for most of their certification exams, of course, including the SC900 exam. To get to the practice assessment, you need to go on the SC900 exam page under the schedule your exam box, and there you'll see a link to take a free practice assessment. You will need to have a Microsoft account in order to do the practice assessment, but remember, you'll need one for the certification exam as well, so you can use the same one. Each practice assessment contains 50 questions, however, their question bank is actually more, so don't hesitate to take it multiple times. This way, you get to practice even more, and you can take it as many times as you want. There is no time limit on each practice assessment. However, at the end, you will see how much time it took you. So this can be a really useful way to practice your time management for the actual exam. The practice assessment contains only multiple choice questions. So not all of the different question types from the exam will be represented in the practice assessment. But for a 900 level exam, most of the questions you'll get in the exam will be multiple choice as well. Now that we talked about it, let's go to Microsoft Learn and see how we can start the practice assessment. We're now in the lab environment. Let me open up the browser here where I'm on the SC900 exam page. We will scroll down a bit here, right under the schedule an exam section of the page. I have take a free practice assessment. I will click on it. Now, if you're not logged in, it will ask you to log in with a Microsoft account. However, since I'm already logged in in this browser, it just goes straight to the exam. Now you can see we have 50 questions per practice assessment, but you do not have a time limit. So now that you get started, you of course have your question. In our case, which type of identity should you use to allow Azure virtual machines to access Azure storage without having to handle password changes manually? And then you'll have your answer choices. In our case, let's say I think it's a managed identity. I can decide if I want to have a bit more of a practice mode where I can check my answer right away and then I will know if it's right or not. Or I can always, for example, say, hey, you know what? I don't want to know which one I got correct or not until the end of the exam. So more like an exam experience. So here, for example, let's take a look at the question. I will say that it's a Microsoft Entra external ID. I didn't really read it. It doesn't matter. I'll click on next. It doesn't show us the actual answer. But this is it. This is how you get to the practice assessment. Now, let's head back over to the slides and go over 50 questions together. Now that you know how to get there on your own, let's review a practice assessment together. Remember that the question in the practice assessment are created by Microsoft and they follow the same style and difficulty level as the actual exam. And while their assessment bank has more than 50 questions, we will review one assessment, so 50 questions in this course. So let's start with the first one. What are the types of distributed denial of service or DDoS attacks? Option one is password spray, protocol attacks, and man in the middle attacks. The second option is password spray, dictionary attack, and resource layer attacks. Third option is resource layer attacks, protocol attacks, and volumetric attacks. And our fourth option is dictionary attacks, man in the middle attacks, and volumetric attacks. Okay, so we learned that DDoS attacks are disruptive attacks that can attack at any layer that is open to the internet. Option one, two, and four include at least one identity attack, such as the password spray or dictionary attack. So therefore the answer is Answer number three, resource layer attacks, protocol attacks, and volumetric attacks. Remember that if you're not sure of an answer, 
you can always use the elimination route like we just did and cut down some of the proposed answers. Now, let's move on to question two. What can you use in Azure to implement network segmentation based on departments? Virtual networks, virtual private networks, Azure Bastion, or Azure Private Links. This one is pretty straightforward as we learned in the security course that virtual networks are used to segment networks in Azure. So virtual networks is the correct answer. Be careful that sometimes you will see similar answers as in this case, virtual networks versus virtual private networks. And our brain will sometimes want to go to the fancier options like the second one, which has the word private. But always take a step back and analyze what you have learned. Let's go to our third question. What can you use to connect to Azure virtual machines remotely over remote desktop protocol and secure shell protocol from the Azure portal? And our options are Azure Web Application Firewall, Microsoft Entra Identity Protection, Microsoft Defender for Cloud, or Azure Bastion. We have seen this one in action in the security course, and the answer is Azure Bastion. All the other ones are not even close to a potential correct answer, and we learned all of them in the past. Question number four is a bit of a bigger one. So you have the following inbound network security group security rules in Azure. Allow VNet inbound with a priority of 65,000. Allow Azure Load Balancer inbound with a priority of 65,001 and deny all inbound with a priority of 65,500. No other inbound rules were defined for the network security group. In which order will the rules be processed? And then we have four options with all of the rules in a different order. As we look at the options, we need to remember that the lowest priority value will always have the priority. So you need to make sure that you are very careful with the numbers as sometimes they might appear very close, but if you don't read carefully, they will get you. So in our case, we know that 65,000 will be first, 65,001 will be second, and 65,500 will be third. So we simply put them in the order of numbers and the first answer will be the correct one. Our fifth question is, which Azure service provides centralized protection of web apps from common exploits and vulnerabilities? Azure Key Vault, Azure Web Application Firewall, Microsoft Entra Identity Protection, or Microsoft Defender for Cloud? We have covered this one in the security course, and the answer is Azure Web Application Firewall. It's really the only solution in there that is made to protect web applications. Now, let's go with question six. Which service enables you to continually assess the security posture, identify threats, and harden resources in Azure and on-premises workloads? Azure Firewall, Microsoft Defender for Cloud, Azure Web Application Firewall, or Microsoft Purview. This one is more interesting. So we know that we need to continually assess security posture, identify threats, and harden resources. And out of the options, only one tool is focused on security on all of Azure with those abilities, and the answer is Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Next up, we have a multiple choice option. So this is similar to what you will see in the exam. Which two industry frameworks are used in the Azure Security Benchmark? Each correct answer presents a complete solution. So it also tells us that each correct answer will be a complete solution. And this is important in the exam because it basically tells you they don't complete each other. Each one of them on its own is a correct answer. And the answer for this question is first, the Center for Internet Security, as well as the National Institute of Standards and Technologies. This is one of those questions that you simply need to know it by heart. So that's why it's important to do a final review 
before the exam because some things, again, like this, you just need to remember them.